Hi guys, welcome back to Windsor Kids. How fun is this? Got a brand new background, looking pretty orange. Um, but it's so good to see all of you again. Got good to hear from you during the week. It's been an amazing time um, in the last few weeks. Uh, we're obviously entering to level three now, so we'll see how that's going to be a little bit different. But first things first at Windsor Kids, highlights. What has been your highlights? What's been going on with you guys? Um, last week we showed you Audrey and Chloe what their highlights were. Um, here's a couple of other kids um, that's going to show you what their highlights are. Uh, there's a Claire and Janie, um, and it's a bit of a special surprise for one of them, and they're both very excited. So, hi Claire and Janie, what was your highlights? Hello everybody, my name's Claire, and my highlights are getting ready the surprise for my sister's birthday. There's balloons that say happy birthday and the, these balloons with confetti inside and yeah that's all. Hello everyone and I'm Janie and this is my highlight of the week. My first highlight is having my birthday with my puppy the first time. Second is my mom's making a cake with lots of layers. And third is my dad is cooking lots of yummy food. Thank you. And a very happy birthday to you too, Janie. What a fantastic highlight. Actually, that gives me an idea. Why don't you guys pause the video right now and share some highlights with your friends and family, those who are around you right now. Fantastic. Now, uh, we're going to check up with Patsy, who's going to... Uh, Tell us a little bit more about some of her favorite highlights. And I think there may be birthdays. Let's have a look, Patsy. Thanks, Dylan. And thanks to all of you who shared your highlights. We love seeing your faces and hearing what you've been up to. Another highlight for us every week is celebrating your birthdays. That's right, the days that you were born. And for those of you who had a birthday this week, happy, happy birthday. We hope you have the most amazing, amazing day. And we can't wait to give you your little gift and card when we see you again. And just as an extra special happy birthday, we're going to give this a go. See if it works, right? Oh, there's such a gift, such a fright. Awesome. Happy birthday, guys. Back to you, Dylan. Thanks so much, Patsy. Now, uh, this is the section uh, that we're going to call our More Than Me section. Uh, as many of you know, each week at Windsor Kids, we have a section dedicated to the idea of being a Christian, being more than just ourselves or what we do on a Sunday. It's the people around the world. This week, um, you may be recognizing this, but we're looking at our free set kids that we sponsor. If you've come to church before, you, you'll know that um, we give to the, the kids at free set through our Giving Monster. And the most important thing about our Giving Monster is that our offerings are all going to India. They're going to help our kids over there by buying them school supplies, clothes, fresh drinking water, so many great things. And you know what? They're just like you and me. Here's one of them. Um, his name is Rohan. He's three, old, he's three years old and he lives in India. Uh, we get letters from him all the time and it's just an amazing thing to hear what's going on in his life. By giving up our offerings each week, we're helping others have a better life. And that's what Jesus taught us, to help others like ourselves. Um, so I encourage you to pray for Rohan and for all the kids in India who need um, help right now, especially during this time. Um, that would be really cool of you guys. Right, let's go to our, our regular series. And for that, we're going to head over to Patsy. Patsy? Thank you, Dylan, and thank you to all of you who so generously give of your allowance or your pocket money um, every week to support our free set kids in India. We really appreciate it, and we know that they do too. Good on you for being missionaries and sharing the light of God to the world. Guys, can you believe it that we've come to the end of our um, Bible series almost? We're looking at the last books of the Bible today. Can you believe it? After 11 long and awesome weeks, we will have learned the names of every single book in the Bible. 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New. That is impressive, guys. And for those of you who have sent us your recordings of you 
recited every book. That was amazing. We can't wait to see what the rest of you can do. Today, we're going to learn about the last nine books of the Bible. These are books of God's final messages to people in the Bible. Eight of these books are like we've learned in the last two weeks. They are letters to God's people. And then the final book is a book of prophecy, a mysterious book called Revelation. Dylan will teach us more about that later, I'm sure. The Bible is a unique book in so many ways. For one, it's one book, but it's broken into two parts, or 66 smaller books, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Each book was written to a different audience for a different reason. The books were written over thousands of years, yet every single book has something in common. They all point to the central message of Jesus, the message that God created us, God loves us, and God sent his, Jesus, his son Jesus to save us. The Bible is really unique because unlike most books, the ending is not really an ending. It's more like an exciting cliffhanger. The opening on the next book, an ending with the promise of more stories to come. In the New Testament, Jesus comes to die for our sins and his followers establish the church that we attend today. Can you believe it? The church that we belong to, the body of Christ, is thousands of years old. And the last book of the Bible, Revelation, tells us just what we have to look forward to. But before we continue, let's head over to our worship team and enjoy singing and dancing and worshiping God together. We're going to worship together. So we're going to start with some stretches. All right, let's start with some star jumps. Okay, then reach up as high as you can go. And then as low as you can go. And then reach over to the side. And to the other side. And then into prayer position. Cool, let's pray. God, we thank you that you are always here with us and we thank you for your amazing love. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to do the song Unshakable and this song is all about how God loves us so much and he's never going to stop loving us. Cool.
Romance. I love that song so much. Unshakable is one of my favorites. Now, before we get into it, let's remind ourselves of the memory verse. Now, our memory verse is actually being brought to you by two very special people. Uh, please welcome Nathan and Jared Blunden. Uh, they're going to help us remind us of what the memory verse we've been learning for the last 11 weeks is all about. Nathan and Jared, take it away. Hello, everybody. My name is Jared. Hope you haven't been driving your parents crazy and hope you have had a nice day at home. Uh, hi, everybody. My name's Nathan, and this is the memory verse for today. God has breathed life into all scripture. It is useful for teaching us what is true. It is useful for correcting our mistakes. It is useful for making our lives whole again. It is useful for training us to do what is right. Thank you. And that was the memory verse for today. So remember. Fantastic. Thanks so much, guys. I'm sure we'll be remembering that one for a while. Actually, why don't we try saying that again? But try saying that memory verse as softly as you can, and then as loud as you can. So just a reminder, uh, that memory verse comes from 2 Timothy 3.16. God has breathed all life into scripture. He is useful for teaching us what is true. He is useful for correcting our mistakes. He is useful for making our lives whole again. He is useful for training us to do what is right. So great. Why don't we move into our, our next item, which is games. Now, these games are so much fun, and I'm glad that I can share them with all of you. But they're more than that. They're a way for us to remember what the lesson's about. And because our series is revolving around books of the Bible, and this is one of our last in the series, we're going to call, call this game, How Many Books? You guys ready? Okay, here we go. So, this is how the game works. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you guys a couple of questions. It's about how many books there are in the Bible, how many sets there are, and you've got to kind of guess the correct number. Sounds easy, but I'm going to throw in a couple of you to, to mix things up a little bit. Okay, you ready? So, for example, I'm going to ask you how many books of Corinthians there are. And then, I'll, then all you've got to do is pause the video, and you're going to guess one, two, three, four, five, maybe not that many, and then I'll give you the answer. The answer is two, by the way. Two books of Corinthians. Are you guys ready? There's going to be a couple of questions. There's going to be about 10 questions, I believe. So let's have a look. Okay, ready in three, two, one. Cool. How many books are there of Samuel? Do you know? There are indeed two books. Two books of Samuel. Well done. You got that right, by the way. That's really good. Okay. How many books are there of kings? Give you guys a couple of seconds. If you guessed two, you are absolutely right. Okay, let's move to our next one. Let's, let's, let's switch things up a little bit. How many books of Galatians are there? Ooh, that's a tricky one. Galatians. Well, if you guessed there are one, then you're absolutely right. Well done. Okay, here's another tricky one. How many books are there of John? I know there's at least one. How many books of John are there? If you guessed four, then you're absolutely right. There's John, and there's one John, two John, and three John. So that's four. How many books of Chronicles? Books of Chronicles. If you guess two, again, you guys are fantastic. What about the books of Ruth? It's pretty famous. But how many books are there of her? If you guessed only one, I'm sorry to say you're absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, here's another question. Just to test your knowledge over the last couple of weeks. How many books are there in the Old Testament? If you guessed 39, which is a lot, by the way, you're absolutely right. We've covered 39 of the old books. That's so good. 
How about how many books are there in the New Testament? Some of you might be able to work with that if you know how many books are there in total. But how many books are there in the New Testament? If you guessed 27, you're bang on the money. That's so good. 27. Okay, here's a tricky one. There's a certain set of books in the Bible that are named the Gospel. Some of you may have heard this before. How many books are there in the Gospel? Give you a hint. It's in the New Testament. There are only four books in the in in the um, in the Gospel. Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Very cool, right? Okay. When we covered our books of poetry in these series, how many books were there in the Bible of poetry? How many books of Bible? A bit tricky that one, but I think you guys are up to the task. If you guessed five, I think you'd be very close. It does kind of depend on your definition, but there are five. So there's Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Songs of Solomon, or in some some of your Bibles, Song of Songs. Very good, guys. Now one final question. This is a big one. And this is going to be based on what we've done in the whole last 11 weeks. How many books in the Bible are there? So the Old Testament plus the New Testament together. How many books in the Bible are there? Well, if you guessed 66, you are fantastic. That is absolutely correct. I wonder how many of you got all 10 right? I'm sure you guys did amazingly well. Now, before we begin, um, there was a point to all this. The point is, the whole Bible teaches us to keep our faith, because Jesus is coming back. Now, we're going to look at a Bible story for today, and our story takes place in Revelations 21, verse 1 to 7. It's entitled, A New Heaven and Earth. And this week, we've got a very special guest reading our story. Um, please welcome Priscilla Yu. Um, she's going to be reading us uh, our Bible story today. So um, let's take it to Priscilla. Thanks, Priscilla. The first heaven and the first, first earth had disappeared, and so had the sea. Then I saw Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem, that holy city coming down from God in heaven. It was like a bride dressed in her brown wedding gown and ready to meet her husband. I heard a loud voice shout from the throne, God's home is now with his people. He will live with them and they will, they will, be, on, they will be his own. Yes, Lord will make his home among his people. He will wipe all tears from their eyes and, they will be, and there will be no death, suffering, crying or pain. These things of the past are gone forever. Then the one sitting on the throne said, I am making everything new. Write down what I say. My words are true and can be trusted. Everything is finished. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will freely give water from the life-giving fountain to everyone who is thirsty. All who win the victory will be given these, these blessings. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Do you know what's really cool, guys? We may be coming to the end of our teach about the books of the Bible. We're on week 11 of 12. But that doesn't mean that the Bible comes to an end. The Bible doesn't end with stories or letters or anything else. In fact, it doesn't end at all. Our lives keep writing this, the big, beautiful story of God. But the Bible that we hold in our hands ends with a very exciting book called Revelation. And the main message of Revelation is that God is not done with us yet. In fact, God will never be done with us. One of these days, Jesus is going to return and we are going to live with him forever. The good news is that 
he's preparing a new home for us. I know we talk about that quite a bit. The new heaven and the new earth, where we will live with him forever. John, who we've met before, he's John as in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He wrote Revelation, and he describes gates made of pearls and streets made of gold. He describes a paradise where there's no trouble, where there's not even the need for a sun or for electricity because Jesus and God is shining so bright that he gives all the light we ever need. The Bible ends with such an amazing promise that one day those of us who love Jesus will be with him. One day we will walk on streets of gold with Jesus. And with that in mind, let's watch a video about this very thing, about all things new. Many, many years ago, one act of disobedience brought the curse of sin and death upon all mankind. And with that curse came great sorrow, grief, confusion, sickness, pain, anxiety, and fear. But through the sacrifice of one perfect man, our Messiah, sin's curse was broken. And with his death and resurrection came the promise that one day the effects of the curse would be completely gone. It was on the bleak and gloomy island of Patmos that God revealed a glimpse of the glories of heaven to his deeply loved apostle, John. It was on this island, drenched in darkness and the horrors of persecution and loneliness, that John was encouraged with the promise of a much better place. Heaven is a real place where Jesus lives and in his presence is great joy and pleasure forevermore. God's glory is unveiled and visible. It is a place where we enjoy face-to-face -face friendship with him. There are no tears because there is no death, pain, or sorrow. There are no broken relationships and no broken hearts. All who are his are new and incapable of hurting or being hurt. The great city of our God, the new Jerusalem, shines in spectacular glory. A crystal clear river flows from the Messiah's throne down through the city, and those who drink of it will never thirst again. Also, in the midst of this new paradise stands the tree of life. The tree that mankind had once been forever banished from approaching is now placed out in the open to be freely eaten from. It is filled with fruit, and because it feeds off the river of life, its leaves will never fade away. It is eternal, like everything else in this new and wonderful place where Jesus lives. The sun and the moon no longer light the earth because they are no longer needed. The brightness of the Savior's glory illuminates the great city, which is built with gold, precious stones, and pearls, and his light sends prisms of color out over the expanse of his kingdom. It is the same city that multitudes of God's people throughout all history have longed for, a city with eternal foundations whose architect and builder is God himself. Open your eyes, your ears, and your heart. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. He is the King. Follow him into his kingdom. Be willing to give up everything to obtain something far greater. The treasures of heaven that cannot be destroyed, cannot disappoint, and cannot be stolen. Yes, I am coming quickly, Jesus says. And all those who are his respond, Come, Lord Jesus, come. What a lovely and quite informative video that we just watched. The last nine books of the Bible all teach us what we need to keep our eyes, that we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Over and over, these books remind us what Jesus did for us and why. They teach us to love, other, love others and live holy lives that will be pleasing to God. And they teach us to keep the faith as we wait for Jesus to come back. Hebrews is the first of these books and the first letter in the New Testament not written by Paul. 
the author of Hebrews points to the scriptures to show that Jesus is the is the Christ, the Son of God, and he encourages the earthly church to keep their faith in Jesus. James also writes to the church, urging Christians to live godly lives. He teaches us to be good witnesses for Christ so that others will believe in him. James is one of my favorite books of all time. Peter, the disciple turned apostle, wrote two letters to the early church. He wrote one letter to encourage the believers to stand strong when they're persecuted. And he wrote a second to warn them about false teachers. But John wrote three letters that are included in the Bible. John was also concerned about false teachers, and he didn't want believers to fall for their lies. John points the believers back to Jesus, urging them to test what they are taught and to keep their faith in Christ. Jude is one of the shortest books in the Bible and the last of the letters. Jude wrote about the salvation we can have in Jesus, and he too warned about false teachers. And the Bible finally concludes with Revelation, John's book of prophecy. John, Revelation tells us that one day the false teachers will be called to account, and the sin that has made a mess of our worlds will be no more. All those who believe in Jesus will live forever with him, and all the suffering of this world will come to an end. The Bible ends with eight letters and one book of prophecy. These books urge us to keep the faith, to avoid false teachings, and to remember the promise that Jesus will return. These books may be the end of the Bible, but they're not the end of our story. They're the beginning of our story and the promise of a bright future with Jesus. Let's remind ourselves what the bottom line of today says, what we want to take away, what we want to remember. And here it is. But the final books in the Bible remind us that Jesus is coming back and to keep the faith. Simple, but powerful. Why don't we all say that together? Ready? Three, two, one. The final books in the Bible remind us that Jesus is coming back and to keep the faith. I urge you this week to spend some time reflecting on what we've heard today. And right now we're going to cross over to Patsy, who's got a very special discipline of the week since the first of the month. Patsy? So as you guys know, every week we learn or practice a discipline of being a Christian. And this week we're going to take communion, just like we do at the start of each month in Winter Kids. And we're going to do it a little bit different today because as we know, when we take communion, your parents do in church as well. So you're going to go and take communion with them a little bit later. Or maybe you already have if you're watching this video later on the Sunday. But we just want to talk for a few minutes about what communion is. Communion is a time where we remember that God sent his only son to earth to die for our sins. It's a time to remember and honor the sacrifice Jesus made for us so we can live with him forever, just like the book of Revelation tells us. We remember this sacrifice of love by eating bread, which represents Jesus' body broken for us, and by drinking juice that symbolizes his blood that was shed for us on the cross. Let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus, that you are always looking out for us. Even before we were born, you were looking after your people. Please help us to remember what you did for us and help us to learn to always turn to you. Help us to hold on to your message and to be grateful every day for the love and sacrifice that you give for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Just bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you uh, that we can, even during this hard time, come together and still uh, have our blessings for the week and learn things about you. Um, I thank you that, that you've given us this wonderful opportunity and I pray that uh, this week is really good for, for everyone that's watching this video and everyone who's not all around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for that prayer. And thanks so much for you guys for joining us. Um, we've had a lot of fun. Um, don't forget, we've got a very special Mother's Day service coming up next week. Um, so practice all your, those crafts and spoil your mother's rotten. Um, also, right after this, we've got something really special. 
that Pat is going to tell us about. Thanks, Dylan. Um, guys, we had so much fun last week with those of you who were able to join us on Zoom. We played a uh, scavenger hunt, we caught up, we got to see your houses, your blanket forts, um, everything you guys were getting up to. So if you would like to, we will be on a Zoom catch up at three o'clock again today, this afternoon. So chat to your parents and we hope to see you there. Dylan's got some really cool games sorted out for us. Um, we had so much fun playing games last week and this week is going to be even better. So please hop along and uh, to get us really in the mood for games and um, all the things that are great that we love, we're going to end with two more songs um, today. Our, our first song is going to be called Waymaker and the next one is We Shine. So get everything moving, sing as loud as you can, have a lot of fun and we'll see you guys at three o'clock. Bye guys. See you then. Bye guys.
Yeah, we're going into all the world. We'll carry.